Hello music fans, it's Brennan from Death by Unicorn here and I'm going to do uh, talking through my album release radar for the third quarter of 2022. So these are the albums that I'm planning to check out. Please let me know if there's any other good ones that are missing from this list that you think I should check out. I'm mostly checking out stuff in the metal, rock, and progressive music worlds. And there's like 43 albums on this list, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about each one. I'm just going to try to rapid fire through them, give you a little bit of a sense of the genre and um, if you might like checking them out as well. Starting off with July 1st is going to be The Deer Hunter with their album Antime. This is progressive rock and it's their eighth album. And I'm not sure if this one is going to follow the storyline from Act 1 through 5. I'm guessing not because it doesn't have Act 6 in the name, so it's probably a separate storyline. Their previous albums all kind of had a cohesive storyline is my understanding. Uh, but I'm guessing this is in a separate world. Uh, but I think it'll still be really cool. Uh, second one from July 1st will be Greg Pusciato with Mirror Cell. This is alternative metal, but it'll probably be very experimental, have some industrial vibes, grunge, synth wave, extreme metal, pop. You never really know what you're going to get with him. He was the front man of the Dillinger Escape Plan before that band disbanded. Uh, legendary Mathcore Kings Dillinger Escape Plan, and this is his second solo album. Third release from July 1st will be Derek, Derek Sherinian. Uh, Vortex is the name of the album, and this is going to be instrumental, progressive rock and metal. This is his ninth album. He's a former Dream Theater keyboard player. Next up for the same day is Horizon Ignited, Towards the Dying Lands. This is melodic death metal with some metalcore vibes thrown in, and it's their second album. And last one from July 1st would be Protector with their album Excessive Outburst of Depravity. This is thrash metal with death metal influences and is their eighth album. Moving on to July 8th, we have Megadeth with their album The Sick, The Dying, and The Dead. This is a legendary thrash metal band and it's their 16th album. And on, also on that day, Journey is releasing Freedom. Their a well-known hard arena rock band. They've dabbled in a lot of different sounds in the past, ranging from progressive to jazz. A little bit of metal vibes from time to time, but not really. A bit more pop, kind of pop rock. It's their 15th album. You know, everyone knows Don't Stop Believing in their hits, but they also have some good deep cuts as well. And on July 15th, we have Alan Parsons releasing From the New World. This is progressive rock and it's his sixth solo album, but you may know his work uh, with the Alan Parsons Project, his band that made a lot of great progressive rock albums starting out in the 70s. And on the same day, July 15th, Senses Fail is releasing Hell is in Your Head. This is post-hardcore and it's their eighth album. On to July 22nd, we have Oceans of Slumber releasing Starlight and Ash. This is progressive doom metal with gothic and melodic death metal influences. And this is their fifth album. They have amazing female vocals from Cammie Gilbert. I'm uh, really looking forward to that one. And on the same day, we have Imperial Triumphant releasing Spirit of Ecstasy. This is avant-garde, technical, black and death metal, and it's their fifth album. On to July 29th, we have Dance Gavin Dance releasing Jackpot Juicer. This is post-hardcore with experimental, progressive, and math rock influences, their 10th album. And we have, on the same day, Ryo Okumoto releasing The Myth of the Mostrophus. Uh, and this is Progressive Rock. It's his fifth album. He's the keyboardist from Spock's Beard. Um, but it's his fifth solo album. If you don't count a soundtrack he did, I think I think he did a soundtrack for a movie as well. So it might technically count it as, as his sixth. And into August now, we've got, on the fifth, a band called A to 
either A to Z or A to Z, I guess, if you're American. Uh, as a Canadian, I say A to Z, but I think this band's American, so we're gonna go with A to Z. And this is a progressive metal album with heavy metal influences. It'll be their debut album, um, but this is a band that reunites Fate's Warning vocalist Ray Alder with uh, Warlord and former Fate's Warning drummer Mark Zonder. And I like Fate's Warning, so I'll probably like this. On the same day, we have Amon Amarth releasing The Great Heathen Army. This is melodic death metal, and it's their 12th album. And we have Soulfly releasing Totem. This is their 11th album, and they're groove metal with thrash and death metal influences. And last album from August 5th that I'll talk about is from Tim Bonus releasing Butterfly Mind. This is progressive art rock. It's his seventh album. He's known for his work with Stephen Wilson in No Man. And on August 12th, we have Norma Jean releasing Death Rattle Sing For Me. This is metalcore with post-hardcore and mathcore influences. It's their ninth album. The same day, we have The Halo Effect releasing Days of the Lost, which is melodic death metal. And this is their debut album. So this is a band featuring former members of In Flames. So probably if you like old school In Flames sound, I would expect it to sound a little bit like that. Maybe with some more modern sounds thrown in. And also on August 12th, Arch Enemy is releasing Deceivers. They're a melodic death metal band. This will be their 11th album. Um, yeah, they're a, they're a female fronted band as well. They do some screams, they do some clean singings. Uh, really cool stuff. August 18th, Russian Circles is releasing Gnosis. And this is post metal or post rock. It's their eighth album. The 19th of August, we have Soil Work releasing Over Given Hayton. This is melodic death metal and it's their 12th album. They're becoming more progressive though over time, so I could see it uh, being a little bit more progressive than their previous albums. And they're, they're maybe getting a bit softer than they were before. Um, from the lead single, it's a bit more melodic and catchy. Also on August 19th, Hey Lung is releasing Drift. This is their fourth album, and the genre for Hey Lung is a bit hard to describe, but they're like dark, apocalyptic, ethnic, Nordic folk, or neo-folk. They also have some like industrial vibes. They play a lot of weird instruments and make a lot of like throat chanting noises and stuff like that. Uh, very weird stuff, but I guess technically it's folk, <laughs> folk music, but uh, Nordic and very dark. And August 19th, we also have 6x6 Six Six releasing their album called 6x6. Six Six. This will be their debut album and it's a progressive rock band. Uh, I think, I forget who the members of this band are, but they're veterans in the prog space. Um, older gentlemen that I forget who they are, but I think they're from some veteran bands. August 26th, we have Muse releasing Will of the People. This is electronic rock with synth pop, metal, symphonic, alternative, and prog influences. They kind of throw it all in. Pretty catchy, typical kind of stadium arena rock stuff for the most part. Um, but we'll see if they do any cool innovative stuff. Uh, I liked a lot of their earlier work, but I wasn't really a big fan of their last album. Hopefully they can turn it around. On the same day, Lonely Robot is releasing A Model Life. This is Progressive Rock and it's their fifth album. Long Distance Calling is releasing Eraser. This is post-metal with progressive, post-rock, and avant-garde influences, and it's their eighth album. August 26th, Brett McKenzie from Flight of the Concords is releasing Songs Without Jokes. I'm guessing there will be jokes, but maybe there won't be jokes. I'm not sure if this is like a serious album. It's his first album so a solo debut from this Flight of the Concords member but I really like Flight of the Concords so hopefully it'll be good and September 2nd we have Arena releasing The Theory of Molecular Inheritance this is progressive rock and their 10th album Blind Guardian releasing The God of the God Machine this is power metal with progressive and symphonic influences their 12th album 
And on the same day, Miss May I is releasing Cure of Existence. This is metalcore with thrash and mellow death influences, and it's their seventh album. On to September 9th, we have Faluja, or Faluha, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, releasing Empyrean. This is technical death metal with progressive and deathcore influences in their fifth album. And also on September 9th, Tala is releasing The Generation of Danger. This is metalcore with new metal and hardcore influences, and there's their second album. And I believe this band features uh, Mike Portnoy's son, Max. On the same day, Alan and Olsen are releasing Army of Dreamers. This is power metal with progressive and symphonic influences. And it's the second collaborative album between Russell Allen of Symphony X and Adrenaline Mob and Annette Olsen, uh, X Nightwish. Also on September 9th, Electric Callboy is releasing Techno. This is kind of comedic metalcore with electronic post-hardcore and pop influences and is their sixth album. On to September 16th, we have The Devil Wears Prada releasing Color Decay. This is metalcore. Also, Death Strage releasing So Much Too Much. This is progressive metalcore with thrash metal influences and it's their sixth album. Also on September 16th, uh, Have Sir, I don't know how to pronounce that band name, releasing Kosa Sui and that's progressive metal. And on the same day, Behemoth is releasing Opus Contra Naturum and this is black and death metal and it's their 12th album. On to September 22nd, we have Weezer releasing Seasons Autumn. This is an EP, a pop rock EP. They released Seasons Spring already and will be releasing Seasons Summer very soon, uh, if it's not already out actually. So I guess they're releasing one EP for each season this year. And on September 23rd, we have Stradivarius releasing Survive. This is power metal, symphonic power metal with neoclassical and progressive influences, and it's their 16th album. The same day, we have Space of Variations releasing Imago. This is metalcore, and it's the debut album of this Ukrainian metalcore band. Last day I'm going to talk about today is September 30th, and we have Lost Society releasing If the Sky Came Down. This is thrash metal with metalcore and groove metal influences, and it's their fifth album. And last but not least, I'll mention Tankard is the name of the band, and the album's called Pavlov's Dogs, and this is thrash metal. This is their 18th album, so they're a German thrash band that started way back in 1982. Their first album was in 1986, and they've just never stopped since. So uh, great longevity there. I've never really uh, done a deep dive on them, but I've heard a couple songs, and Sounds cool, so I'm gonna give it a give it a spin and see how it see how it sounds listening to a full album. And that's it. So there's at least two albums every week for you to check out. A lot of weeks I listed even more, like four, or, or uh, I don't know if there's some weeks that I even have five albums that I'll be checking out. Um, yeah, but that's what I'll be listening to. Let me know if there's any that you think that I'll like. Uh, I will probably have some videos about a lot of the ones that I mentioned here are my first impressions on them. Maybe not all of them because it's hard to talk about everything, uh, but that's that's what's coming out if you're interested in in uh, metal rock in Prague. And I'll probably do another one, another video like this for the fourth quarter of 2022. Uh, so we'll talk about stuff coming out in October, November, and December, but that will probably be coming a few months from now. So stay tuned if you're interested in that. Peace out.